Hello, welcome to the eighth section of our Kotlin full stack application course. In this section, we'll be creating React architecture and see how that plays together with Kotlin. We'll set up a package to con contain our React bindings and then introduce those strongly typed React bindings to our Kotlin application. Finally, we'll be creating our first Kotlin React application and then take a look at React component architecture. In this video, we'll be setting up Kotlin bindings for React library. We'll create a package for React bindings and choose a binding implementation library. And then we'll port over those bindings that have been provided for us. And finally, we'll take a closer look at those wrappers and see how they match the React library on the JavaScript world. Previously, we had a main function that printed out hello world or hello web back into the console and then made an XHR request. Now I have added Kotlin X HTML JavaScript into our build.cradle.kts and I have also created a new package called React. This React package contains React wrappers that have been provided by JetBrains, the creators of Kotlin language, and we are now using them to match the dynamic world of JavaScript into a more strictly typed world of Kotlin. Within this package, we have three different levels of files. First of them is a package called DOM. So this contains React DOM bindings. Then on the root level, we have the actual React bindings themselves. We also have few utility classes that makes it easier for us to handle JavaScript implementations with Kotlin. As you know, React is split into two different libraries. The first one being React DOM. React DOM handles the DOM manipulation from React. So it contains the shadow DOM implementation it does the diff checking when we create or when we modify our React components, and then it paints them into the DOM if there has been any changes to our needed to render it elements. The other part then is the actual React library that contains the application flow, the architectural considerations of React and then the lifecycle methods of our React components, as well as state and props. If we take a look at these guys, let's jump into React DOM first. React DOM is an external object and it has an annotation JS module. This means uh, two different things. So we know that this is a JS module and therefore the whole build process needs to be exposed as a module, either using UMD or common JS modules on the JavaScript world. We also know that this module is named as React DOM. So when we actually want to call this module from JavaScript code, we can require it with this name. This React DOM, there are two important functions that we have in here. First of them is find a DOM node that takes in a React component and returns an element. With this function, we can pass in a React component and see where in our HTML or where in our document object model is this React component bound into. The other function that we are interested in is the render function. The render function is the entry point for all React applications, and that will be the first function that is called within a React application. It takes in a React element and a, an HTML element that will act as a container to our React elements. We actually have an extra extension function to the render function in here as well that takes in uh, the HTML elements where our React will be bound to. And then it takes in a Lambda with a receiver. That receiver is of type React DOM Builder. If we jump deeper 
into this React DOM builder, we can see that it extends tag consumer interface that is defined in Kotlin X HTML. Therefore, we know that our React DOM builder is capable of printing out and using the Kotlin X HTML DSL builder and we can create our React elements by using that Kotlin X HTML DSL. The other important or interesting thing in here is the React element itself. So if we jump into this React element, we can see that it's just a simple interface. And when we take a look, take a closer look at a React component class, we can see that the render method within our React component responds with a React element. The React library lifecycle, it is fairly simple. So it only has this amount of exposed functions, seven different functions, and then a render function that is the only thing that is necessary to implement when you are creating a new React component. This Kotlin binding implementation of React component exposes all of these functions as open and then an abstract render function. We also have a few properties in here, the first one being props and the second one being state. As you know, React has two different data type of objects. The first one being immutable props and the second one being state that contains the React component state and might change between the application lifecycle. We also have a React component wrapper in our bindings in here. This wrapper is a wrapper to match our render function, our Schultz component update, etc. functions to the JavaScript implementations that we get from React world or the React library itself. That way we are not exposing our own implementation of these functions and we can just call and to make some Kotlin specific uh, modifications to our data with these render and other functions. With these bindings, we are finally able to create our first React application and write that in Kotlin. And especially it is good because we can write it in a type safe way.